Before getting into this video, I want to credit Hero Electronics on Autodesk Instructables. This is the guide that I use to get OctoPrint running on the Libre computer that I'm using. In this guide, they use the Lepitato, but in my experience, I had no luck getting it working on the Lepitato. It just wasn't stable enough. It would just crash, and no matter if I changed the Wi-Fi adapter, it would also just crash. So if you guys are actually able to get it working on the Lepitato, let me know. In the description, I'll be linking this guide as well as what you will need. Okay, so now that we have everything, we can now begin, and to begin, we're actually going to be needing Belina Etcher. What the software is used for is flashing OS's onto an SD card, so for our case, we're going to be needing to flash Ubuntu onto an SD card so that we could get Octoprint running. So we're going to need Belina Etcher, or if you don't want to get the software and you know another software that you prefer or you already have a software, just go ahead and use that one but you're just going to need Belina Etcher or some alternative to that. Next, we're going to go ahead and need the image file for Ubuntu, and here we're going to be installing a server version, but you can use a desktop version. Another thing to bear in mind when downloading the image, you want to make sure that you're downloading the right image file for the model that you have. For example, I'm downloading the third to last one because I have the ROC RK 3328 model, so that's the one I downloaded. Once you have the necessary files, go ahead and open up the flashing software, and once this is open, you're going to want to select the Ubuntu image as your flash file. Then you'll want to select your micro SD and make sure you're selecting the right drive. Go ahead and confirm that you selected the right drive and flash. Okay, so now that the flash is complete, it's going to automatically eject your micro SD card. Go ahead and take your micro SD card and insert it into your Libre computer. Also, if you're interested in this case, I designed it and it's on printables. You can find it here, I'll link it down below. Pretty cool. There's also one for the Lepitato. Speaking of printables, have you heard of them to be honest? I didn't hear about them until a few weeks ago when I started getting back into this hobby, but they have tons of models. The site's super responsive. They have dark mode, which I'm super big on. Not only that, they listen to the community. They have community contests, and with these contests, you can actually win rewards and prizes. They also have a point system they call Prusa Meters, and with these Prusa Meters, you're able to redeem an abundant of things from their catalog. Now, some of the things that I mentioned is just scratching the surface, so go check this out for yourself at printables.com. Okay, so now I'm just going to insert my keyboard dongle into my Libre computer. Then I'm going to plug in the Ethernet. Then the HDMI cable. And lastly, the power. Okay, so once your system is fully booted, go ahead and log in using Ubuntu, and then password is also going to be Ubuntu. It's going to prompt you to change your password, so go ahead and type in the current password, which is Ubuntu, and then whatever password you'd like. Okay, so now that we're actually into our system, you should see your IP4 address and you want to write this down, but in my case, it got washed away because I'm using a capture card, at least I think it's because of that but still install this net tool because we're going to be using it later. Once that is installed, go ahead and run the command ifconfig. Then you're going to want to jot down the inet address. Okay, so now on your computer, go ahead and boot up any terminal that you like. I'm using command prompt and run this command, ssh ubuntu at whatever inet address you have. Now for here, just respond with yes, and then put the password that you created previously. Now if you plan on using Ethernet, you could go ahead and skip this installation of the network manager, but if you're using a wireless adapter, you're going to want to go ahead and install a network manager. Okay, so now once it's done installing, I ran this command to check the active devices, and then I went over and I plugged in my wireless adapter, and then I ended up running that command again, 
to make sure that it's being recognized. Okay, so now that my device is being recognized, I'm gonna run the Wi-Fi list command so that I could get my BSSID to the network that I want to attach my device to. And to get out of this menu, hit Q. Next, you're going to want to run this command. Okay, so now after this argument, right click to paste in your bssid and then do a space type in password and then space the password to your network This step is optional, I'm just checking if my device is connected. Now we're going to go ahead and run the ifconfig command to get our iNet address. This is the address we're going to be using to connect to our computer wirelessly. Okay, so we're done with the wired connection. Go ahead and run this command if you need to relocate your device. If not, just run exit. And once it's shut down, you can relocate it to the desired place. Now you just want to SSH into your Ubuntu server using your IP4 address to your wireless connection. And if you get this error, down in the description, I'll explain how to fix it. And you just want to log in to your Ubuntu server normally once that is fixed. Now that we're SSH'd into our system, go ahead and run this command to install the git. This is what we're going to use to clone the repositories of the Octoprint. Now that the install is complete, go ahead and run this command. Now we are actually cloning the repositories. And then we're going to simply run this command to run the script. And we're going to prepare the system. Next, select 2 for Ubuntu. Now it's going to ask you to use a proxy, just say yes, then 2 for you streamer. It's going to ask you if you want to set up an admin user. I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to just use temporary admin and password. Now for the next three options, just say no. Once we get to the screen, we're going to open up our web browser and type in our IPv4 address. Now just log in with the admin user that you set up. Now go ahead and configure the wizard setup and skip over the webcam and time lapse. Once the setup is complete, just go back to the terminal. Now back at the terminal, you should see this if not run this command. Create a new instance and name it whatever you want and assign it default values. Before auto detecting, make sure that you have your printer turned on and you have the cable to your printer. Once you have those things, hit Y and you have a minute to hook up your printer to your Libre computer. Do the same for the USB camera. Now I just hit enter. I set the resolution. 
and the frame rate. Now with the printer turned on, we're going to connect to it using the port. Now I'm just going to configure the connection. Now that we are connected, we should be able to go under control and see our webcam footage. But in my case, I wasn't able to see it, so in these steps, I'm going to show you how to. Just open up your settings and you're going to want to go to the webcam and time lapse. Now once we are here, you want to make sure that it's running off of the IPv4 and the port to your webcam. You can see that it's different, so I'm just going to replace that. And also you want to do this to the time lapse. Now I forgot to record this earlier in the video, but put this for the path to set up the time lapse recordings. Now that concludes our video. I hope this really helped you guys. Um, the Instructables really helped me. There was some problems that I did encounter, but I did find a solution to them. But I hope this video helped you guys. And if it did, please leave a like and subscribe. It, it really does mean a lot. And check out Printables. It's not sponsored. I just really like the site and I happened to just stumble upon it when I was struggling with another site and it it, it's been a game changer so if if you're just browsing or you're a creator and like to publish things it has so many configurations that you guys just need to check out it's just really cool i'll leave it down below but anyways um there's more to the video i'm just installing plugins and you can see that i'm struggling right here i had to actually restart because i was saying no internet connection i don't know how i'm connected to it but i just restarted it and then it worked but there's still more to the video, um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy.